In this video, we're gonna take a look at the details of a TCP connection and take a technical look at the three-way handshake that takes place whenever establishing a TCP connection. So whenever we want to transfer data over the internet, we can do so using TCP or UDP. Now, normally applications are just going to make this decision for you. You don't really have to think about it. Uh, it's just gonna depend on what kind of data that you're transferring and in what kind of app you're transferring it. But you could technically use whatever you want since all the 65,535 network ports, they all have a TCP and a UDP variant. Now, TCP is what we would call a stateful connection. So what that means is it's going to always keep track of the status of the connection, and it's going to make sure that each packet that you transmit to the server or vice versa, all of them are going to arrive intact and in order. And if any packet, even a single byte of that data gets sent incorrectly, it's going to be retransmitted. And TCP also handles flow control, which as the name implies, handles the flow of the data that's being transmitted. And this is especially important whenever you're transmitting data over a long distance that might have to go through several different networks, like take my home office setup for example. I have a CAT 5E cable that's running from my desktop to my router, and then the router connects to my ISP's ONT, uh, and I pay for a one gigabit connection, a uh, fiber connection to the street. So from my computer to the telephone pole, my network can handle one gigabit of bandwidth. And if I connect to a high speed network that's nearby, that's not gonna have to go through too many hops, like say MIT, for example, then I can get transfer speeds up to about one gigabit. Um, not exactly one gigabit because there's you know headers that have to get transferred, but it's really fast and it's pretty consistent. Uh, but if I were to transfer data to somebody on the other side of the world, or even someone who's right down the street, but the endpoint connection to their computer is slow, like if they're not using a CAT 5e cable at least, then I'm not going to get the full speed. I'm going to be forced to use the speeds that are as slow as the slowest link in that connection to prevent any data from getting corrupted or sent out of order uh, in that TCP connection. So this TCP connection will usually just be initiated with one packet, uh, not transferring very much data at once, and then it's going to increase exponentially with each successful transfer until the maximum throughput that that network or, again, whatever the slowest hop to get to that network is, is reached. And there will also be variance in the transfer speed as networks become more or less congested. Uh, for example, when the COVID lockdowns first started, many, many people were now all of a sudden all at home at once using streaming services like Netflix. And this caused bandwidth constraints in many cities infrastructure because even though all of the residents that are on a street, they might be paying for a one gigabit connection or whatever connection is supposedly rated by their ISP to be able to handle four or five devices streaming, all of the wires that are going to the poles and then the backbone connection needs to be able to handle all of that. If it doesn't, then not everybody's going to get their full throughput. Uh, same thing with Netflix's servers that are actually serving this content. If everybody's trying to access it at one time and they don't have enough bandwidth on their end to actually deliver it all, then things are going to start getting delayed. Now, luckily Netflix and streaming services in general tend to use UDP for serving the content. So when congestion starts to happen, you really just get a lot of buffering in the videos and you just have to pause them and kind of let them buffer for a bit. Or maybe you'll get out of sync audio or you'll just get lower quality video because it's just throwing whatever makes it through at you. But if the bandwidth is being limited in something like a file transfer, for example, you can't just take whatever pieces of a file come at you because then the file is gonna be corrupted. So you're gonna see more retransfers happening in that case, or just a lower window uh, so that there's less bandwidth being sent whenever there's congestion and TCP connection. 
Uh, so now let's take a look at the three-way handshake that is used to establish TCP connections. And I actually have one of these handshakes captured in Wireshark. Uh, so we'll take a look at it in there. So first the client sends a synchronization uh, or a, a send segment to the server asking for it to open up a connection. And once the server receives the sync segment, then it's going to go ahead and do a send ACK. So you got the send and then you got the send ACK. And the send ACK is just an acknowledgement uh, that the send has been sent. And then it's also sending back a send request to the client for them to open up a connection as well. And then finally, the client will respond with an ACK. Uh, which is just basically saying to the server's con uh, saying yes to the server's connection request. And so now a two-way connection is established between this client and this server. And there's also the FINAC here to close the connection. Now this isn't actually necessary. In fact, you usually only see this on like static web pages, which are becoming less common, but the FINAC just means to close the connection. Uh, basically the server saying to the client, hey, I'm done transmitting data, and then they acknowledge that as well, but like I said, it isn't necessary. Uh, so if we take a look at the TCP information um, for these packets here, if we go into the flags, we can see that the SIN flag is set. So this is just, the value here is one, so it, it represents true. Uh, and I'm also broadcasting a window size of 64,240, so that's 64,240 bytes at once that I can receive. And this can be adjusted if you have window scaling enabled to multiply the amount of bytes uh, that you can receive. And if we take a look down at my options here, we can see that I do have window scale enabled and I have the window scale set to seven, so it's going to multiply by 128, because that's basically just two to the seventh power. Uh, and this window scale would slide more open or less open as the congestion rises and falls on the networks in between you and the server. Um, so now if we take a look at the next packets flags, so you see that both the SIN bit is set and the acknowledgement bit is set because this is a SIN ACK. And now if we take a look at the ACK and the flags, just the acknowledgement bit is set, not the SIN. Uh, and then if we go into the FINs, then of course you got FIN and ACK, all that good stuff. But like I said, this uh, usually doesn't come up as much. Mostly the SIN, SIN ACK, and ACK is what you have to deal with with TCP connections. Now, if any part of this TCP handshake fails, then it will have to be restarted from the beginning. And in fact, this fact about the TCP handshake can actually be exploited with a type of DDoS attack called a SIN flood. So what a SIN flood does is you'll have one or more computers that are just sending SIN request after SIN request from their devices to a server, but then they're never acknowledging that SIN ACK that the server sends back to them. And then this can be scaled even further by using uh, scripts to spoof all kinds of different user agents and virtual connections. So one computer actually looks like a whole bunch of different computers and devices that are trying to connect to it. And it's just sending so much bandwidth worth of SIN request that all of the bandwidth available to the server will eventually just become those send requests that it's receiving and then responding with send acts, which of course contain more data in them than just the send requests. And then eventually nobody else is able to connect to that server because they can't, you know, their legitimate send request to actually go on that website and do legitimate things can't get through. Uh, so there you go. You're a little bit more familiar with TCP. Hopefully you find this knowledge useful. Be sure to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more.